it's just funny how instinct um, led me to just such an incredible story and an exciting journey about two years ago I was walking along the beach and I saw this right but when I saw it it was sunk in the water and I thought to myself you know what as soon as I see it I thought that's not off a boat that I thought that's not that's not marine yeah. then I picked it up I saw this welding on it right and I, thought, and I looked at it and I thought, oh, and this, this ring round here, right? I thought, right, that's, that screams out exhaust pipe to me, that thing. Then I thought to myself, this is some high-grade stainless steel, this is, right? I'll tell you now, right? You could not move that, and that would take some moving, right? Yeah, you'd never move it with, you know, you probably wouldn't even budge it with a hammer, right? It's that heavy-duty. I think to myself, hang on a minute, if it's that thick and that heavy-duty grade of stainless steel, right, how has it been crushed like that, right? How the hell has it been crushed that, that, that much? So my instant instinct, right, was this is possibly off an aircraft. That is, bizarrely enough, that is the first thing I thought of, an exhaust manifold. Why, first of all, if my thoughts were, if a ship sunk, why would that break like that? and be crushed like that. But, you know, it wouldn't have really on a boat. Boat's not gonna go down that fast and heavy, is it? And if it did get crushed, it'd be stuck underneath the boat. So that was my first thought. So I was, I was buzzing, just thinking about it, just even thinking about what it might come from. So I got home and I went to see a friend and I asked him, because they know an aeroplane expert. And in the after looking at it, he said, it definitely looks like airframe of some description. So, of course, I was excited just to get that. That was almost like a, a wow, that's nailed. Good that he could say it was airframe, which I thought it was anyway, just for instinct, so he probably felt the same. So he just flung a name out, Mosquito. I started coming out and I started looking at aircraft and, and the sizes of things, and I just couldn't fit it up on anything like looked at the Spitfires and Mosquitoes, etc. I couldn't fit it with anything. So I'm chewing my brain over it like for two or three months, right? During that time, I'm still walking the beach, still humming and hollering about what that is. After about three months, still no closer on the other piece, this turns up. Now, I don't know anything about the military, but I know enough to know that that was a 50 caliber bullet. Not only that, but I knew enough to know that that hadn't been fired, right? Which opens up a can of worms to me, because I'm thinking, right, that's not a training round, that's a real 50 cal round, right? Obviously, I know the date should be on the end, right? But when I get up and look on the end, on the bottom, it's covered in concretion, like that. I've never dealt with live bullets, so I didn't dare scrape it off at the time. Put that on hold for a minute. Came back here and I thought, right, I'm gonna scrub this up. I began scrubbing away. The light shone on it in the right manner. And I couldn't believe my eyes. What I saw was, was, see how the light shines off it, you can't see it like there. It was so hard, and once I cleaned it off, all of a sudden it, I went like, got the light right, can you see that? Now I was really excited. Got straight onto the RAF Museum. This is the email here. So the number, that number there, 1-16598. Dash four two. This looks like part of an exhaust manifold from a radial engine, and more specifically an American radial engine. The main suspects would be R1820 and R1830, which I now obviously know are Curtis Wright engines. As the exhaust appears to have been aircraft specific to US aircraft, I thought I'd give the B-17 a go. Sure enough, the numbering system is the same format used by Boeing, although I couldn't find an exact match in the manual I have available. So my best guess at the moment is a part of an exhaust manifold from an R-1820 fitted to a B-17, possibly an F model, as I can't find an exact match in the G model parts list. Well... Not only that, but he sent me, he sent me, 
the pictures of the parts it was likely to have come from from the ring it's a ring exhaust manifold from the back of a b17 and this is the one he was pointing out to me here um i believe it was um we were thinking uh, this part section here moves the cover plate only when he's ready to install one of the sections he builds the ring up from the bottom starting with the y section Think he gets the next section ready by removing the cover plate. Each additional section is tightened with a connecting clamp. This is done before the mounting bolts are drawn tight. I've just found out that, and I'm, it's like a eureka in that. It's like I've done it, the uh, investigation is over, but it wasn't, was it? Now I started reading about them, then I found that an unfired 50 calibre bullet, the actual bullet, and for a moment I stood there and I took into account that people shot these at each other. I know they shot them at planes, but they used to, people used to get shot. It wasn't, you know, lost on me. And I really, really started thinking deep about, like, you know, World War II and everything and how bad it was. I'm, I'm looking into it more and more. Right, a couple of weeks later I get, I get, an, I get another one of these turned up, don't I? So I've got, so I've got two now, haven't I? Right, and look, this other one is cleaner. So I'm looking on the bottom, Lake City Ammunition Plant, 1942. Oh my God, we're really onto something here. So I go back to the other bullet, after handling this one, I get confident, and I managed to get the end of that one off. And that's 1943. I saw this, right, Sea Pauling a few years back. The bomb squad were called out to uh, an oxygen tank, which they thought was a bomb, but, they, they said it was likely to be from a B-17. Um, and I, I started looking at that and I thought, yeah, it looks like it. Right? So, I look, so like, I'm studying B-17s now, you know, up and down like, like crazily. Don't forget, F model, that's important you remember that. Meanwhile, I get another bullet turn up. And I'm thinking, Jesus, what's going on? I had to really, really clean this one up. Here we go. 1942, then another, where are we, come on, 1942, that one is Remington Arms Company, so these ammunition were all from different plants, so I'm thinking to myself, no way, start looking at the B-17, they're full of, they're brimming with browning machine guns, aren't they? Why would I have drive 50 calibre rounds? Because the plane crashed and they hadn't shot them off. Well, why hadn't they shot them off, though? That's interesting. I started looking into B-17 crashes and there's, like, thousands of them in, across the North Sea, up and down. I, I was thinking, yes, oh, it's a minefield, you know. Meanwhile, I found another part. If anyone does know, <laughs> if they watch this, what that is, because I've had... There's no numbers on this. I did run it past one person, and they said some kind of control linkage. So then I find a thermostat switch. So the next thing that comes up is interesting. In fact, the funny thing was, right, I pulled this in, right, and I thought, there's no way, right, this great big weight is on a plane, because they're supposed to minimise weight, aren't they? Yeah, but look at all the alley bottom on here. I was thinking, why is that aluminium like that on there? You wouldn't have it on a boat, especially alley, especially from an old boat as well. So, that was interesting. So I brought it home, even though it was a heavy old piece of crap, I still brought it home because I just had a feeling that tied in. A couple of months later, on the beach, just about that much of amount, right, of this was sticking out of the sand underneath these huge rocks. And I was thinking, oh my God, that looks like something like, seriously part of something like a plane or something. I didn't know if it was tried to move it, it wouldn't budge, it was under the sand, absolutely stuck to hell. And I remember saying to people, like, look, I remember saying to them, I'm finding, I'm finding a B-17 bit by bit, it's so exciting. And people weren't like listening to me, but because I'm, I was the one keep going on the beach and finding the stuff, it all just had an up, you know. And like, I'm going on, they're going, oh, really, yeah. I'm like, no, seriously, I'm finding bits of the same plane, it's not a different plane, I could just sense it. So that, that disappeared. Next time I was at the beach, that big bit of aluminium, that disappeared. Right? So, 
next thing I found was this. And immediately, because I've been looking into that sea pool and oxygen tank, I thought to myself, I was just studying the picture, looking at the drawings, everything, and I thought, that don't half look like them straps that hold them blinking B17 oxygen tanks in place. I mean, I, it, I, I couldn't find an exact one, but they were very, very similar things, you know? I see this on the beach, and this time I've got a picture of it, right, and I'll show you. So, and it looked like that, right? I tried to move it, right? And that was just way too heavy. I thought, I've, I've got to get this off the beach or I'm going to lose it, aren't I? It's going to go somewhere else. Because this is, like, seriously important. So, I couldn't budge it, right? I ended up breaking it apart. I brought home these cross members. That's all I could bring, unfortunately. But I still had part of it. And then I could look at this pattern here. Right, and if you go to the drawings, you can see clearly the riveting pattern. Anyway, long story short, a couple of weeks later, I had my other two longitudinal sections roll up on the beach. One was quite light, but the other one was really hard. I had to get home on the car, but I managed to get them home and assemble them here. Right, this was the real clincher for me. Amazing. Not only that, I have about a 10 foot section of it and you'll, now you're going to get a real idea of the size of this thing, right? I mean, that looks big to you, but that is literally just a small part of the tip of the wing main spar from the leading edge. So you can tell the thickness of the wings. This thing was huge. So it's about 101 foot wingspan tip to tip. So from where I am, my part is on there. It's about another 40 foot, 40 or so to get to the fuselage where it would attach and then go through right down the other end of the other wing. These things are huge and this would take all the main load bearings. So there you go. I've made the full identification after all the, going through all that time, taking my time with all the little parts coming up. It was amazing buzz. The video you see on the screen now, that weight apparently would have been in the wing as an aileron mass balance uh, weight. So I found out what that was. Now, it all started with this bit of stainless steel and ended on a quite insignificant last find, which was a piece of plumbing like this. The difference being that junction in the middle wasn't bronze, but aluminium. And when I took it home and I wire brushed it up, I could not believe my eyes. Talk about put the full stop on the end of the sentence. I was aghast with excitement when I read those words embossed into that aluminium. I still get excited talking about this. I want to leave you with this amazing animation now and these genuine sounds of these people in these B-17s. The fear they must have felt, but at the same time, the bravery to go through with it and stick at it just astounds me so if you'd like to hear about the actual plane that all my parts came from and the amazing backstory then give us a like let me know in the comments and um, if I get enough interest then I'll get that uploaded thank you very much for watching and until next time over and out